Thank you for visiting You Grow Row. If you've been here before, I appreciate you. Thank you so much for coming back. If this is your first time, I hope you'll consider subscribing at the end of this video. Maybe even leave me a comment or hit that like button. It is another beautiful fall day here in Ohio, Akron, Ohio, and I plan on spending the day in the kitchen today. I'm going to be doing some canning. I got a really good deal on some sausages at my local Giant Eagle. It's a grocery here. And um, I've been telling you guys recently that I've been using the app called Flash Food. Well, I caught a sale for the sausages. They were on sale, the five pack. It's the hot Italian sausage for $1.50 each. I couldn't pass it up. I couldn't pass it up. So I got five of them. There's no way we're going to go through five packs of hot Italian sausages anytime soon. So I decided to try canning it. I know it's going to work out. I've canned sausage before. I've canned ground beef before. And they, they're fine. I like it. I don't have the um, freezer space to put them in there. Uh, but so, yeah, I pulled out the camera and I'm like, yeah, let's do some recording today. So stick around. See what I do. So as I previously mentioned, I got these for a really great price. They were $1.50 per pack. Um, today is October 30th, 2022, and their sold by date was October 26th. So I got these a couple days ago because I got them on the day that they were had to be sold. Um, and I put them in the fridge. They're fine. They're still just as good as they were before. Um, but like I said, I don't have any freezer space. So this is my other option here. I'm just going to can them up. Um, they're the hot Italian sausage links. And I'm just going to cut them into chunks. I've not done this before, so I'm going to kind of experiment. Not in that it hasn't been done before and that it just hasn't been done by me. So I'm gonna cut some of them up and in one jar, I'm gonna leave them whole and pack them that way. So um, in the past, what I've done is just filled the jars, but I didn't pack it, like I didn't shove it down in there. You know, you wanted to leave some space around it. I did leave about an inch of head space and it was pretty simple. This is what they call cold packing. Um, so my meat is cold, my jars are cold, my canner is cold. The canner that I'm using is um, a digital pressure canner, and I think it's by Carrie, but it's the same one that the Nesco is. I'm not sure what happened there. They even look exactly the same, just the logo is different. Um, I had a Nesco, and uh, um, I ended up messing it up, so I had to get another one. <laughs> And I couldn't find the Nesco, but I did find the carry. So now I have the carry. Six of one, half dozen of the other. They're the same thing. Anywho, so as you can see, I'm just packing the um, pint jars. These are pints. And I'm not shoving them down in there. Because you want the heat to be able to get through and around the meat to cook everything up. So see, in this one, I'm putting them in whole instead of chopping it up. I've never done that. I'm just seeing how that's going to work out. I started to put four in there, but really only three fit in there comfortably. So, Something else that I've done, but I'm not doing this time, is that I have added peppers and onions to the jars before as well um, so it would be you know the sausage chunks and some sausage and some peppers these will be great to just throw on top of a pizza or mix into um, a breakfast scramble I don't know wherever you would use sausage I guess um, aside from I maybe even like a sausage sub would work I think you could yeah you could Good. Any way that you would use sausage, you can use this.
as you can see, I'm just raw packing this. I'm not adding any stock or any water, no liquids, period. The only liquids that's going to be in there will be produced from the sausages themselves. Um, and to that end, there will be a lot of grease in there as well. But I'm not adding any liquids at all. All right, so uh, we're at the canner, and you have to add some water in there for your pressure canner, and so mine requires eight cups of water. I'm using a pint glass, so I'll be pouring in four pints of water. And now I'm just putting in my rack that came with the canner because you don't want to sit your uh, glass jars on, on the heating source. Before I can, I make sure to wipe off the tops of my jars with some vinegar to get off any oil that might have been transferred whenever I was putting the sausage in the jars. That might hinder the seal, and we don't want that. This carry canner holds... Uh, six pints or four quarts. I'm just adding a splash of vinegar to the water in my canner to help prevent that white film that develops on the jars when you're canning. Now I'm setting my pressure limiting valve to exhaust. Now I set my pressure canner to high and put it to the amount of time. It's all done. Let's check out these sausages. All right, here they are. Here I'm bubbling. Let's take a look. Well, would you look at that? Aren't those beautiful? I was really surprised at um, how different the amount of liquid was that was left in the jars from each from each jar. Although I think it's pretty easy to assess that I must have clearly put different amounts in each different amounts of sausage in each jar, and that would account for why the um, level of liquid is so varied between the jars. I was just fascinated with it. I don't know why I was moving them around. You really shouldn't be messing around with them too much when, when you pull them out of the canner, but there I was doing it anyway. <laughs> And that's it. There you have it. There's my sausages. On the right hand side of the screen is the full links and the rest of the jars are the cut up links. Um, these look absolutely delicious to me. I can't wait to bust into those. Um, and I'll be back with another video sometime soon. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Leave me a comment. Bye.